Major John Madden on the beach in Veracruz. I so often introduce my videos by saying on the ground, but I'm on the beach. This is a beach just a half a mile from my hotel, Mari Tierra. And it's a bay. You can see out there the little sliver where the big craters go in and out from the open ocean. After that, right out there, the open ocean. So this is calm for swimming. This is great for swimming. On Corpus Christi Island, the bay was wonderful swimming in the morning. No chop in the morning. And I swam at about 8 o'clock. And there's probably never much of a chop in here. So that's very exciting. And it could be my first night sleeping in my new apartment. With If things work out, I think that could work out. And I want to tell a story. If you stick around long enough, things have a chance to repeat in a better way. You know the movie Groundhog Day? That's not about same shit, different day. I've heard people claim that. No, it's about life gives you a chance to repeat it in a better way. And in that situation, Bill Murray, was it Bill Murray? I'm not sure, I think it was Bill Murray has a chance with Andy McDowell, Asheville, North Carolina's sweetheart. I lived in Asheville for 16 years and I actually had one Andy sighting. People always talked about Andy sightings. So in that movie, he had a chance every day to learn how to love her better. So I had a chance to do a situation that had been ugly and semi-violent and a little traumatic in a much sweeter way. On Galveston Island, beautiful beach, long, long seawall, beautiful beach. They would rent out a chair, I don't remember tables, a chair and an umbrella for something like 75 bucks a day. And people would come down from the hotels because they didn't take all that stuff with them to Galveston. And they'd, they'd pay, it. maybe it was 45, I don't remember. And I was walking down that beach, much as I was this, this morning, early in the morning, it was like seven o'clock, long before they were renting to anybody. <clears throat> and I sat, just like I did here, sat in a chair to have a cigarette. And lovely young woman who was the front person for the operation came up and said, you know, we rent these, hon. And I said, I'm having a cigarette and then I'm moving on. Is that a problem? She said, no. We had a nice little chat. Then her boss, the redneck who ran the operation, comes along and slams the side of my chair real hard and says, get out. I looked at him and said, I'll get out when I finish my fucking cigarette. He pulled back his shirt and brandished the firearm on his hip, nice automatic pistol, and said, you're gonna go now. So as in one, one other situation back in Chicago when somebody was pointing a gun, he was pointing, that guy was pointing a gun at me. I left, but not without wising off. I said, well, you're a regular charm queen, man. I bet you have a great little business. And I yelled to the girl, good thing he's got you to talk to the people because he's got no people skills. I said all that as I was leaving. So the way it repeated better here that, that girl just made the whole thing better. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's, 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 that's Mehor right there. <laughs> so the way this repeated better, was well, sure enough, the, I sat down here because it looked like maybe those tables, somebody would be staffing them already. I saw nobody here, but sure enough, a nice guy comes down and says, say rent us, senor, we rent these. And I said, por diez minutos? Uh, para fumar un cigarro? Yeah, yeah, he says. Quantos? Cincuenta pesos. And I said, Hola, señor. I said, Cincuenta pesos for diez minutos? Yeah. Si. Sí. And I said, Treinta. I came back with 30 pesos. He says, Okay. So I dug around in my little Veracruz souvenir coin purse. And it was a bunch of one penny pesos. 
I didn't have the patience for counting them, so I handed him the whole bunch, which is probably, probably was 50 pesos. And he was happy, and I'm happy. I'm, at this point, I'm probably more than 10 minutes. And I promised him no basura. I won't leave any garbage, and I won't. I've got my filter, which I never throw on a beach, and my finished cigarette. I'll go back in the camel box. And I'll walk back down to my hotel. I don't have to check out till noon. I can't really afford another night there. And I said to my friend Roxana, who's coming back from Jalapa three hours away, specifically to introduce me to her landlord, I said, we got to make it happen today, doll. Because I can't, if I'm not sleeping in my new apartment tonight, I'm sleeping in your living room or on the beach. And uh, I haven't looked to see if I've got a message back from her. But I think it's all going to work out. Total, I don't know about everything. <laughs> but so far, everything's working out. I've only been back here in Veracruz for seven days. And things are falling in place pretty good. New lifestyle. My car was stolen in Orizaba, something like three weeks ago now, maybe. And... Uh, I had been saying before I ever went up there, I want to stay in Veracruz. Yeah, I've got all these plans for Riviera Maya, Cancun, eventual Mente. But they're telling me that actually the stretch of road between Veracruz and Merida is dangerous. The first, the first genuinely dangerous stretch of road. So I'll go eventually. But right now, all I can think of is feet on the ground, swim every day at the beach, the, the apartment that Roxanne is talking about is somewhere right back in here. She says, a couple blocks from the beach, you got a balcony with a view of the harbor. So that's awesome. Now the wind is really starting to kick up. It may be impeding your ability to listen to me. And all kinds of things may have impeded your ability to listen to me before we hit the seven minute point. So I'll sign off. Can't post this to YouTube till I get on Wi-Fi which will be soon, will be soon. So stay tuned. If you're not hearing this because it's not up yet, be patient. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not always the most logical dude. All right, bye.